Hi, boys and girls. This is me, Mrs. Barr, and I'm back again to teach you in our historical fiction unit. This is lesson seven, and it's about determining themes. Now, I know we've talked about themes before, especially in our um, first unit when we did fiction books. So for this time, we're going to kind of think back to when we talked about themes earlier in the year. And once you pause to develop an interpretation, now an interpretation is your thoughts, the way you interpret the book, the way you think, hmm, what is the lesson here based off of the evidence? So when you do that, you almost wear an idea like a pair of glasses, like a lens. You can read through the lens saying, oh yeah, this goes with my interpretation. This goes with what I thought this book was about. So that's what we're gonna kind of do today. Let's remember what a theme is. A theme is a main idea, a moral, or a message of an essay, paragraph, movie, or a book. The message may be about life, may be about society, or human nature, things that we do. Themes often explore timeless and universal ideas and are almost always implied rather than stated explicitly, meaning you have to do the work to figure out what they mean. They're not going to come out and tell you exactly what the theme is. You have to read the story, Look at your evidence and interpret. What might this book be teaching us? Or what might this book be about? So to do this, I thought, let's review what theme is a little bit. Remember, theme, like I said, is like kind of like a lesson. So I thought, since we're not all reading the same books and that's okay, we're gonna play this little game right here. So let's look back at movies that I know we've all seen before. And the first one we're going to talk about, Toy Story. Now, if you can remember the, the theme or lesson of Toy Story, do you remember what that story was about? Or Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, or Frozen. So I thought we're going to go ahead and try to just match these up as best we can. When I look over here, I'm thinking about the first one. It says, we are capable more than we know. That's a pretty good lesson. But I think it could go to more than one of these. And if you think that, that's okay. Because remember, your books can have more than one theme. The more books you read, the more you're going to get into those complex books. And those complex books are going to have more than one theme. So we'll come back to that one. True friends will always be there to help no matter what. Hmm. Again, I can think of a couple stories that that might go to. But I'm going to keep on going. It's not good to keep your emotions locked away. Let them go. Hmm, I think I have a good idea what this one might be. And beauty is found within. So let's go ahead. Think about this on your own. And then you can pause this. Think about it. Which ones would you match up together? Okay, let's see. See how you did. Toy Story. So I said Toy Story is about true friends will always be there to help no matter what. When I think about that story, I think about Woody and all the adventures he goes on and realizing that he needs his friends there to help him and that they are there. The next one, Lion King, we're capable of more than we know. Thinking back on Simba and he didn't think he could be king, but with perseverance and practice and friends to help him along the way, he was capable of becoming king. Beauty and the Beast, beauty is found within. As you know, the beast is a very hideous kind of creature, and Belle's not so sure of him at first, but she doesn't really look at him on the outside and realizes on the inside he is very sweet. And then last but not least, Frozen. It's not good to keep your emotions locked away. Let them go. So Frozen, I picked Frozen because it reminded me of Tiger Rising. And when I think about Tiger Rising, I think about Rob's suitcase and the tiger being caged up and Rob being really unhappy until he finally opened up that suitcase and let his emotions out, kind of like Frozen. You know, I think back of examples of Frozen, how Elsa wasn't talking to her sister or wasn't telling her what was going on. And when she finally let those emotions go, she was able to be happy. So good job on that, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and do the work now that we just did with those movies. And let's do it with Number of the Stars. Remember, we're thinking about the theme. So we're going to put on our glasses here and we're going to think about number of the stars. And what we interpret. The theme should be. We're interpreting based off of the examples we get from the book. So again, I've thought about this and I've thought about how I think the theme is that war makes children grow up early. 
again, um, let's look back at that scene I talked about last time and how there was a knock on the door from the soldiers. And when the soldiers came in, Anne Marie reached for the necklace from her friend Ellen and she kind of held on to it. She, she um, yanked it from her, from her friend, held on to it while the soldiers interrogated her or talked to her. She was really brave for doing that. Um, why I'm thinking this is like, would she normally be that brave? Or is the fact that she's in war and she knows that it's a life and death situation that she has to be braver than she normally would be? So it kind of makes me think about war and how it makes children grow up early. They don't want to, but given the circumstances, they kind of have to. In many cases, Anne-Marie has to risk her life for her friends. And that's not something that we would normally do as children. Do you have any other ideas about what the theme might be? All right, well, jot them down. So today what I want you to do is think about your story and the ideas that you have about it. It's okay if um, your initial idea changes. You know, if at first I thought, oh, Number of the Stars is about Anne Marie being brave. Okay, but then as I put my lens on for interpreting, I realized that the war has a lot to do with it too, or why she's brave. And the war has a lot to do with why she kind of has to act like an adult now. So war really makes kids grow up quickly. So look back at your jots as you're reading your books. What ideas do you have? Have they changed since the beginning of the story? And then for your activity today, what I want you to do is I want you to write a letter as if you are the main character of your story. So this letter should express the main character's feelings about the life lessons he or she has learned. At the beginning of the letter, State the theme you think the text is conveyed, or what do you think this text or story is about. The body of the letter should have two to three examples from the story that support this theme. So think about what is your story all about? What's the lesson here? And then jot down some ideas or examples from there, just like we did earlier. Think about your story and your character's actions. So always remember that after you pause to grow big ideas about text, when you read, if your book continues to get lots of ideas, one of your jobs will be to examine those new ideas through the lens of your initial idea. That initial idea will change. Perhaps you'll add more to it. All right, boys and girls, it's been awesome teaching these past couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs>